This video is all about application of the technique of implicit differentiation. But guys, here in my channel, I'm going to discuss also some of the topics related to civil engineering such as surveying, structural engineering, geotechnical, and hydraulic. So keep watching on my channel. I hope you enjoy watching this video and I hope it will help you on your studies. Thank you so much. Uh, let us try to apply this on some calculus problems. So this technique is very good to apply for the problems regarding related rates. Wherein there are two variables that changes with time. So let us give an example. So determine how fast the ordinate of the point that moves along the curve for x squared plus 5 y squared plus 2 x squared y squared equals 133 at 0.23. Given that point moves along the x direction at a constant rate, of 3 units per second to the right. Let me give you a short explanation on this. You have this curve. So this is just an illustration. It is not the exact graph. This is for x squared plus 5y squared plus 2x squared y squared is equal to 133. And there is a point. Let me call it this point. This point has a coordinate of xy. Since the point is moving along the curve, x and y changes with time. What are the things to consider if you are solving related rates problem? Okay, number one, you should note what variables are keep on changing with time. So, so in our example, that is x and y. Next, you should have a function or equation that relates those variables that keep on changing with time. So in our case, this equation is the one relating the values of x and y. So therefore, so the next thing to do is to differentiate it with respect to time. So let us do it manually. After you do this, let us check what is the required and what is the given. What are the given? So the point moves to the right at the constant rate of 3 units per second. So what does it mean? So say for example, this is the graph and this is the point. The point moves to the right at the constant rate of 3 units per second. So what is dx over dt? So our dx over dt is positive 3 units per second. How do we know that it is positive? Because according to the problem, the point is moving to the right. Since we all know in analytic geometry that right direction is positive. So if the point is moving to the left, we should put a negative sign. And we are asked to find the value of dy over dt exactly at the point 2, 3. You're going to determine the value of dy over this dt at the instant the point is at coordinate 2 and 3. So you just substitute x is equal to 2 here, y equals 3 here. And then since the value of dx over dt is constant, therefore, at any point on the curve, the value of dx over dt is always positive 3. So therefore, we just substitute all of those given in this formula and then let us just solve for dy over dt. And now solving for dy over dt, the answer is negative 3.384 units per second. What does negative answer means? It only means that our point is moving down at 0.23. So if this answer became positive, it only means that as the point moves to the right, our point is also moving up. And now, how are we going to apply our technique? So as you can see, determining the derivative of it implicitly is a very long and tedious process. The technique here is you can utilize the concept of chain rule. You are just after the value of dy over dt when the point is 2, 3. You get the value of dy over dx and then multiply it by 
dx over dt. And dy over dx is basically our y prime. So you just get the y prime at 0.23 and then multiply it with the given quantum value of dx over dt, which is positive 3 units per second. So this is how you apply the technique. The first thing that you're going to do is to rewrite the equation in the form of g of x, y is equal to 0. You just transpose the 133 value here to the left. 4x squared plus 5y squared plus 2x squared y squared minus 133 is equal to 0. So let us check if this is theoretically exact. If you have to entry here, this is exact 0. So in your calculator, you store 2 into x. Shift store x. And then 3. Shift store 2y. And then press it. 4x squared plus. Okay, you see? That is perfectly equal to 0. And then after doing that, guys, you just press this thing. For y prime, you use our formula, negative g of ay over g of xb. So let me remind you on this. Since this should be perfectly equal to zero, do not round off numbers in the middle of the solution. Negative g of ay. Negative, so you put it here and then replace all values of x to a. This one will become 4a squared plus 5y squared plus 2a squared y squared minus 133 all over 4x squared plus 5b squared plus 2x squared b squared. So in the denominator, you're going to replace all y by letter b. So I told you how to do how to get the value of a and b. You just add a very small increment on both x and y respectively. So for a, that's alpha x plus four zeros after the decimal point and then store it to a. And then for y, alpha y plus 0 0.0001, store it to letter b. And then type this equation. After typing this expression, we press equal. That's the answer, negative 1.128. But that is just the value of y prime. So to get dy over dt, we're going to multiply it by 3. So we we'll multiply it by 3. Answer times 3, negative 3.3846. So you see, you don't need to perform long integers differentiation if you know this thing. So let us try to have another problem on this. Okay, let us now move on to this problem. Determine the equation of the tangent line of the y-intercept of the curve e to the x squared plus y squared plus x y minus 5 is equal to 1. Equation of the tangent line. So how are you going to do this? Say for example, let us illustrate. This is the x-axis and the y-axis. And then let me say for example that this is the curve e to the x squared plus y plus y cubed plus xy minus 5 is equal to 1. So to be able to know the equation of the tangent line at the y-intercept, you should get this point. So this point is, of, of course, the x-coordinate is 0, and you have unknown value of y. So you have to get the tangent slope here, which is the first derivative of y with respect to x. And then if you get the slope, then you can use the term y is equal to mx plus b. If you're going to do it manually, this is the solution. So the equation is e raised to x squared plus y cubed plus xy minus 5 equal to 1. So you're going to differentiate it with respect to x. And let us do this. Let us try to know what is the value of y. This has taken us 
e to the x squared. Since x here is 0, let us uh, substitute it here. e to the 0 squared plus y cubed plus 0 times y minus 5. It should be equal to 1. So, for this to become 0, the value of this exponent should be equal to 0. Meaning to say, we're going to solve for the value of y so that this exponent will become equal to 0. That's y cubed minus 5 is equal to 0. So, therefore, the answer y is equal to cube root of 5 cube root of 5 is equal to 1.71. So let us try to determine its first derivative. This is 0 and 1.71. You substitute x and y here at 0 and 1.71. So since the x is 0 and you solve y by equating this exponent equal to 0, so this is theoretically equal to 0. Therefore, this whole term will become equal to 1. e to the 0 is equal to 1. And then multiply by 2, so this is 0. So what will happen next? So this will be 1.71 squared y prime plus x is 0. So therefore, this one will be like this plus y. So this term will be cancelled, okay? Equal to 0. And then let us solve for the value of y prime. So take note, y, y here is 1.71. So therefore, solving for the value of y prime is equal to negative 0. 195. Therefore, the equation of a line is simply equal to y equals k. So, we can use y equals mx plus b. So, y is equal to slope is negative 0.195x plus the value of 1.71. So, that is the equation of the tangent line at its y-intercept. Guys, let us apply our technique. Okay, look at this. The first thing that you're going to do is to express this in terms of g of x, y is equal to 0. This is just e to the x squared plus y cubed plus x, y minus 5 minus 1 is equal to 0. And guys, you are going to determine the value of first derivative of y with respect to x at this point. For this equation to become equal to 0, the value of this term should be equal to 1, perfectly equal to 1. It will happen only if the value of x squared plus y cubed plus xy minus 5 is exactly equal to 0. Since x here is 0, therefore, this will be y cubed minus 5 is equal to 0. y is equal to cube root of 5. As I said a while ago, if you are performing this technique, this equation should be perfectly equal to 0. So it means that if you take the value of y, you shouldn't round off. You should use the exact value of cube root of 5. But this thing is not a problem on us. Why? Because you can just store directly in your calculators. Here, you press shift cube root of 5 and then you store it to y. So you use all the decimal, no rounding off. So for x, we can store it also to letter x in the calculator. And then you use the formula y prime is equal to negative g of ay over g of xb. For this one will become negative e raised to all of the x here will be replaced by a. So this will be e to the a square plus y cube plus a y minus 5 minus 1. And for the denominator, all of the y variable will be replaced by b. So this one will become e to the x square plus b cube plus x b minus 5 minus 1. Since we already store x and y promptly in their respective variables, for a, that is alpha x plus a very small increment, four zeros up after this decimal and then one, you store it to letter a. Okay, let us replay this and let us put alpha y here. You erase this a and then store it to b. Shift store b. Okay, so this is the value and then we type this in our calculator again uh, 
after typing it, we press equal and the answer is still negative 0 0.195. So that's it. You already get the value of the derivative of y with respect to x without performing the actual differentiation. Uh, we all know that this is 1.71. Therefore, this equation of the tangent line of the y-intercept is simply equal to negative 0 0.195 of x plus 1.71. I hope you get it, guys.